Hello from the Forstronics YouTube channel. Welcome to two methods for soldering SMD or surface mount components by hand. And that's exactly what we're gonna look at in this video. Before we get started, if you haven't checked out my website, forstronics.com, please check it out. And if you like what you see in this video and you're not a subscriber already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. All right, let's get started. Okay, when you're doing prototyping or you're repairing a PCB or trying to hack a PCB, a lot of times you're going to need to, you are going to need to solder surface mount components by hand. At least I find myself having to do it a lot. Now, if you're new to that though, it can be pretty challenging because unlike through hole components, surface mount components tend to be a lot smaller and they don't typically stay in place where you want them to stay when you're trying to solder them. Another thing I'm doing for this tutorial is I'm assuming that you just have the basics of, of a solder station. So you have a basic solder station with a solder iron that you can adjust the temperature. You know, I'm not talking about a solder pencil that you just plug in, those get way too hot for this type of application. That you have tweezers or something like small needle nose pliers that you can use for the components. And that you have solder wire, which is, you know, that spooled up wire of solder with flux typically in the middle and solder paste. So for one example, I'm gonna use solder wire. For another example, I'm gonna use solder paste. If you're not familiar with solder paste, it's like a liquid paste form, surprise, surprise, and it's made up of tiny, tiny solder balls and flux. And the idea is when it heats up and it typically is used in a reflow oven, it then flows, creates the solder, binds your component, and then your board comes out of the oven finished with, with, uh, you know, with all the components soldered on. I have a video on that if you wanna check it out, but here we're gonna be using solder paste with the solder iron. And the reason I wanted to say the basics is, you know, they have some definitely some fancy solder irons for surface mount components. Here, I'm just assuming you have the basics. And that's what we're going to use for these two examples. And then for this example, I'm just going to use an SOT23 package. It's actually an N-channel MOSFET, not that that matters. But an SOT23 package is fairly small, and I thought it'd be a good, good one to use for, for this example. All right, let's check out the two methods in action. Okay, here is a PCB board. I'm gonna warn you when I go through this example, if you think I'm going a little slow at certain times, it's remember that I'm looking at a camera and trying to solder these on. So, so uh, keep that in mind. Okay, and here I just picked a blank board, an old board I had. Here's my solder iron, just a basic solder iron with a basic tip. There's my solder wire. So I'm gonna use the wire for the first example, and then I'll use the paste for the second example. So what I'm gonna do here first is put a little bit of solder right on my soldering iron and not directly on the component. And the reason is, is one of the hard things about surface mount components is you typically want three hands to do them. You want a hand to hold the component in place, a hand to put the solder wire down, and a hand to hold the solder iron. Unfortunately, most of us only have two hands. So for this first example, I'm gonna put a little solder on the, solder on the tip of the soldering iron that way I already have solder on there ready and I just need my other hand to hold the component in place and tack it down. So that's what I'm gonna do first here. And I don't need much solder because this is a small component. You can see I'm picking it up with tweezers. There's the SOT package. I have it with the tweezers. And I'm just gonna use this method just to get it tacked down, just to get that first leg soldered down. So you can see I'm on there. We got to flow a little, not great, but that's all right. We just need to, to be tacked down right now. Now, since I have it in place, I can use two hands, one with the solder wire and one with the solder iron. And you can see, look at that, it flows right away, very easy. And then that first one, I'm just gonna clean it up a bit. I had a little solder on the tip of the iron, I'm gonna clean that off. But I'll just clean up the component a little bit, and then I'm good to go. So there we go, and I think I'm gonna hold this up so you can see it. Components on there, pretty easy, no problem. Now let's look at the solder paste. So the solder paste, we're gonna put it directly onto the board. So once again, this is more of a move to prevent us from, or to allow us to do this with, here, let me go back a second actually, I was going too fast. There's the solder paste I use, you're welcome to use whatever you want. Chip quick is what I buy. This actually has lead. You can get unleaded solder, of course. This T5 though, what I mentioned earlier, solder paste is really just really tiny solder balls mixed in with flux. 
T5 has the smallest balls. I know that sounds bad. The reason small balls are good, for solder paste at least, is smaller balls work well for really small legs. When you're working with, let's say, a really small, I don't know, IC that has very small legs. So that's why I always just buy T5. Anyway. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I have a real fine nozzle tip on my solder paste, and I'm just gonna apply it to the pads for it. So there's a drop, it almost looks like a miniature Hershey Kiss. There's another one. And here is the last one. Now normally, you use solder paste in a reflow of it. But here, I'm actually gonna cause it to flow with my solder and iron. Now for this method, I would only recommend this method for prototyping. I wouldn't, look there, I'm showing the, the solder goop right there. I wouldn't recommend this, this method for manufacturing, just, just for prototyping. Okay, so now I'm gonna put the component on the solder paste and move it to in place. And that's what's nice about the solder paste, it almost helps hold it in place. I'm still gonna use my tweezers so I'm trying to position it better for a better camera angle. Squeeze down on the tweezers, and my solder iron, the heat from my solder iron causes the solder paste to flow. And once again, the first one, a lot of times isn't perfect, but it tacks it down. And so once it's there in place, I don't even need to bring in the solder wire, right? I just need one hand at this point, and I can cause the other. Now what I'm, for this method, one thing you want to be careful of is notice how I'm, I'm being thorough. I'm going all the way around the legs because I don't want any unflowed solder paste in there. So that's the one thing you want to make sure with this method is that you get all the uh, solder paste to flow. And then I think I go back to the front. Maybe I do. Maybe I don't. Yeah, I do. Just to make sure. Once again, going all the way around the leg. And... That angle doesn't look good, but that one looks really good, and so does that one. So you can see that it flowed pretty nicely. So there you go. There's uh, two methods. There's two methods for putting on surface mount components by hand. And you can see nothing too hard, and I'm just using some basic soldering equipment here. Okay, that's it for two methods for soldering surface mount components by hand. Hope you saw that was pretty easy. If you have any comments to add, use the comment section below. If you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do. Thank you for watching.